People are talking about another star in the competition for very different reasons. Nat Fife, it's just been revealed out for another six weeks. It started with a knee injury, now a back injury. Let's take a listen to Peter Sumich and then his coach, Justin Longmuir, during the week. I'm hearing Fife. I know he's come out and said he's got a back, but, boys, his shoulder is tough. He can't even do any contact work. Even if you touch it and push on it, he's getting sore. So that might be a career-ending shoulder. Oh, just Yeah, that's categorically wrong. Um, yeah, at the moment, his shoulder's um, going fine. Um, yeah, he's really comfortable with the progression he's made and the work he's put into that shoulder and feels like its strength is really strong. You know all three men in that situation very well, Ross. <laughs> well, that's typical Perth, a sensationalist media view. And he's had a back operation. He's had a bulging disc in the past that he's managed. Clearly, they've gone in and done something there. It's nothing to do with his shoulder. And his shoulders look pretty good to me. So my understanding is his shoulders are perfect. It's the back issue that kept him out. So, look, that's just someone hitting a headline. And, and I love that the coach was strong and was categoric. It's not his shoulder. All, all the chat around Nat before the season, Ross, was that... And we had him on radio a few weeks ago. He, he's rebuilt his body. He's feeling great. He's ready to go. Did you still, prior all the talk about his injury, still see him as going into the comp as another potentially yeah. dominant midfielder? And he's not tried. When he says something, believe yep. it's true. So... But he was clear. My time, I've given the time to the kids. I've been forward. I'm rebuilt. I'm yep. ready to go and I'm going. So I would take that at face value. And he's got plenty to offer. Plenty to offer. Yeah, I agree. I just wonder how they could preserve him. And I've just seen a trend in the AFL game around protecting. Or as guys get later in their careers, Sam, move them to a different role where they can look after yep. him a little bit or get young blokes in the midfield. And I thought, here was uh, Chris Fagan talking about Dane Zorko. So I'll touch on this first. You look at these guys. Penelbury gone to half-back. Zorko to half-back. Heppel to half-back. Kenny to halfback Zebra. They're for very different reasons because I don't think they're in their best midfield anymore. A lot of these guys, or they want to build other midfielders. With five, probably still is. He still is, but I think he plays such a brutal tough game. He's a tough inside mid. When he goes forward, he's flying for marks, getting batted yeah. around. I just wonder if they could play him. Ross, you suggested wing. Yeah, I th because he's a massive runner. People don't understand how big his tank is. And, like, I think it's McIntosh from Richmond just goes yeah. up and down, same height, the effect he has on games. Yeah. I think half-back how's aerial dominance. There's no better mark in the AFL that yeah. five could just dominate a half-back line. So yeah. I really like your suggestion. Yeah. And then you can, like... Hodge and Mitchell still flicked in from half-back mm. and Bergon to on-ball when you really need him. I think it's a great suggestion. Dane Zorko, I mean, I, mm. Dream Team is not my thing, but he got as many Dream Team points as Lockie Neal on the weekend and four coaches' votes. Don't know if they all came from Chris Fagan. Yeah, I wouldn't have given him any votes, Cara. I, I've I watched him play. Here, here is uh, Chris Fagan talking about uh, the move of Zorko to half-back. It gets harder for guys as they get a bit older to play big minutes in the midfield and cop all the attention that he... He cops and, um, you know, to be honest, I learned a little bit of that from my Hawthorne days. You know, Luke Hodge went to halfback later in his career. So did Sam Mitchell, Sean Burgoyne, and those guys. And it sort of elongated their careers somewhat. It's just a little bit easier to play at halfback physically. So I've got no issues. I think he could be, he could be a great halfback. Yeah, I just thought that uh, he was hobbling badly from the first minute. I'm not suggesting he shouldn't have played because they said it's a management of trying to get blood flowing through and he tightens up. But if he was playing against a Melbourne uh, or a side that could really hurt him, Ross, but I think he could have been badly who, exposed. Who was his opponent? Devin Smith. He's a pretty good player. Not at the moment. Right. Well, I think that... Look, if it, what do you have? 31. I think yeah. it talks to... Mm. It's easy to play half-back yeah. if your team's putting pressure mm. on, which clearly his team did. Yeah. A lot of things I didn't think I'd hear tonight. Caro talking about the dream team is one of them. No, well... <laughs> I love it, though. Well-rounded, well Caro. Well, Fantastic. once I saw he got four coaches' votes, I thought, well, yeah. why are we criticising him? <laughs> he looked I mean, up the dream team results. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you do it limping. Yeah, a lot of kick-ins, too, to those points. Moidy and... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about the coaches. <laughs>